Hey guys, so I'm really excited to chat to this next player. It's been a very long time since we've caught up uh, and it's an opportunity for us to get some insight into the camp in New Zealand and how they prepared, how he's feeling ahead of this particular test series. And I think it can be quite exciting and, and quite an interesting talk, but I'm going to leave that up to you guys to decide. And I, I want to try and get as much as I can from him with regards to his journey to this comeback to the Proteas. So that's what today's show is going to be about. It's going to be about him as a player, obviously, over the last couple of years, how his career has been. And then, of course, what it is like there in New Zealand currently. But before we get going, before we get started, a couple of things I'd like you guys to please do. First and foremost, subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell for all future videos. We are nearing closer and closer to our next milestone, so please help us get there. We've also recently launched the New Zealand tour edition of the magazine. So please go get your issue. It's 100% free. Straight to your inbox every month. Link is on the screen as well as in the description. And as you guys know, we've re recently launched the Cricket Fanatics magazine business corner. This is for all businesses, entrepreneurs, startups to market their business effectively and affordably to a cricket audience. If you want to do so at an affordable rate, an effective rate, then you're going to have to join this particular link because we are the only viable option for you. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. I'm looking forward to doing this one. A very good morning and welcome to Cricket Fanatics magazine. This is your exclusive interview with Dane Pete. I'm your host, Khalid Moirin. And we're going to have a nice chat and sit down here with, with Dane and, and get some insight into his recent career as well as his current situation in New Zealand. So first and foremost, welcome to the show. How are you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm all good. No, no complaints. Uh, it's actually, uh, what's the time? Yeah, it's the evening. It's uh, 10 past 7. Um, but yeah, it's been good. Um, I'm doing really well, pretty chilled. Yeah, so let's get straight into the into the discussion first. I want to know a little bit about New Zealand. Uh, what has it been like there to acclimatize? I know you guys uh, went earlier to the to New Zealand to acclimatize and get familiar with the conditions. Can you tell me about your times um, flying and then obviously landing and then your preparations heading into this? Yeah, so so I actually um I've I've I flew I flew in on the seventeenth of uh, last month. Was it this month? Where are we now? Let's see where we now. Last month, yeah, it's the second of February at the moment. So um, I flew from America um, to South Africa, and then the very next day we flew to New Zealand. Uh, so I had quite a bit of a a whirlwind or, or a trip around the world. Uh, to be honest, I've traveled from. The us all the way to, uh, to new zealand but it's been pretty good to be honest um uh it's it's it's, it's a team that sort of makes you feel welcome because we've played with each other for such a long time now since the the new zealand series so i mean the the environment and everything's been good it's been a lot of fun um it's a great bunch of guys it's it's by far the best protein team that i've been involved in from a from a gears point of view um because everybody knows each other um and and that helps you know um to settle in with each other and, and make everyone feel comfortable. Um, and the whole world knows that it's not a, a settled Proteus team by any means. Um, and it's, it's a bunch of guys that's, that's come together. So, um, and, and done pretty well. So yeah, it's been, it's been good. Um, traveling is part of cricket, traveling away from families has been part, of, uh, it's part of cricket. So yeah, it's been, it's been good so far. I know probably everybody deals with jet lag differently and that traveling schedule. Uh, any advice uh, to some people that, that have to go through that? No. Um, to, to be brutally honest, I mean, it's it's down to the individual, you know. Um, once you get there, you just got to sort of acclimatize. Um, I won't give any sort of my uh, private tips away on how to get over it because uh, people will start judging. Um, but... Um, it's just about, you know, trying to acclimatize as quick as possible so you can get into the swing of things. But um, I came from the U.S. and we are 18 hours away. 
um, from New Zealand. So it's basically two days. Sometimes when flying, it's two days ahead of time when you get there. So um, for me, it, it it wasn't as bad as I, I expected it to be. But probably when I go back home, it'll be pretty difficult. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been good. Um, it's just down to the individual at the end of the day. Um, and, and that's that's how it goes. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I want to ask you first and foremost, because this come back to some people might have seen a little bit of a surprise, given the fact that obviously we knew that they, there was going to be a, a different team being sent to New Zealand. Uh, and obviously with regards to the scheduling of the SA20, uh, that also caused some havoc with us. So I want to know where you um, obviously what you were doing when you got the call up or when the conversation started with Coach Shukri about you coming back and, and playing for the Proteas in this particular series? Um, it was basically about three months ago. Um, I was sitting at home, uh, home in, in the US, um, and I got a message from Shukri telling me that it's in New Zealand with a question mark. It was similar to the Ben Stokes and Moen Ali sort of conversation, but he actually screenshot something from, from Google um, about the conversation, and I was like, in the way that if people know me really well, the public don't know me the way that the people close to me know me. Um, and the way that I would respond to that is the way that they respond to it. And I told him, stop stop lying to me, man. Like, be real. Um, I'm settling in the U.S. Um, there's there's obviously plans plans were for me to qualify for the U.S. Um, things happened in the U.S. that um, unfortunately, you know, d- took my desire away to, to sort of play for the U.S., um, and then I was like, yeah, why not? You know, um, he's one of the guys that that I've appreciated on the scene. Um, people that don't know the story, it's like I came from the, the Coke Week um, in 2008. I did pretty well. I was the only guy to be selected to the SA under 19 or what, the SA schools, SA Colts team from Western Province at that time. And I got short, sort of luckily I got drafted into the, the amateur teams and, you know, bowling at the Nets and the Cobras. And then I trained with, with the Cobras for for for, for most of that season. Um, and Shukri, I was on the, you know, on the radar of the Cobras. Uh, he really liked what he saw. And then, unfortunately, he got fired. Um, and he's a type of guy that's always, you know, I've resonated well. I've, I've sort of appreciated his conversations because it's it's straightforward and it's straight to the point and that's how i am and that's what i appreciate you know i don't like guys beating around the bush and trying to make me feel comfortable you know good is good bad is bad so just be straightforward so everyone can move on and thankfully um you know this this is how it's happened you know it's it's, it's come this way it's, it's it's happened that way he was honest with me um and yeah i mean the only thing I asked him was if, if I can stay in the U.S. and still do my obligations to cricket in South Africa. Um, and he said he has no issues with that. And that's how uh, things started happening. Um, and then all the Division One teams said they don't have money for me um, to come back and play for them. Uh, but we never even spoke about the money. It's just that I feel like the Division One teams were quite fearful of, you know, trying or disrupting of the team. And, you know, Shukri had his plan with me. And then, thankfully, one of the one of the good men in South African cricket, JP Tricha, had reached out um, after a conversation. Um, and yeah, it looks like I'm, I'm a night uh, nights player. Um, and you know, the, the rest is history, really. First game, got a five. Uh, um, and yes, like to a certain extent, I wasn't prepared because things happen quickly. Uh, but thankfully, it, it happened um, in the way that I wanted it to. So. Yeah, I'm happy to where, with where my game is at at the moment. Can you talk me a little bit about that U.S.? You mentioned U.S. a lot and the move to the U.S. I remember it very clearly when it happened. Can you tell me about the standard of cricket, the experience living there? I mean, a lot of people dream of moving to to the U.S. and never mind even doing it for, for a hobby or a job or, a, or something that they're passionate about. So can you tell me about that experience? Yeah, so so for me it was um, I looked for something. I was at the stage of my career. I just got dropped. I had a tough tour of India. Um, came back. Uh, the Cobras cut my salary by two hundred thousand rand, um, and I looked for something that was different. And in that season, Rusty Tehran sent me a direct message to be okay. Listen, um, this is happening in the US. Are you keen? I spoke to my wife. I just got married in twenty nineteen. 
spoke to my wife. She's an occupational therapist. She had her own practice. Um, and that's why I appreciate, you know, uh, support and everything that w- with what we've done. Um, obviously, leaving family in South Africa is never easy. Um, and, you know, I just look for something different, try to be at the start of something. Um, and, 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 and I moved over. Um, the standard of cricket for me, it was a surprise, like most of the people have said. Um, because it's a you don't expect the talent to be there, but people don't understand the makeup of the US because you know the TV doesn't show you know what actual America is, you know. Um, and there's a big expat uh population from India, Pakistan, all of those. So they've generated a a, a cricket community within the country, you know, and it's it's thriving, uh, but it just needs someone to to drive it in the right direction, you know. Um, and now with Major League Cricket, um, everything seems to be going in the right direction. Yes, there's going to be teething issues. Yes, there's going to be guys that try to sell you a dream. Um, and, I, and and with me saying selling the dream, it was easier for me to come back because that did happen to a majority of the players. Yes, we're trying to work through a few, a few things there at the moment um, to try and make it better and, you know, just just, just a bit more truthful. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's it's been good. The standard of cricket's real good. I mean... The under-19 team that people are seeing at the moment, um, it is one of the first teams that have been exposed to the world uh, to the world of cricket. Um, but with guidance and proper cricket conversations, um, cricket's only going to get better in the US, you know, and the, the amount of talent that's, that's in the country. Um, you'll be very, very surprised. Yeah. And when you say selling a dream, do you mean, when the, are you talking about with regards to salaries or players that they're going to get, etc.? Or what do you mean by that? Yeah. So obviously um, things things were, were promised at the time. And um, when when Major League happened, um, it was given to us that, you know, we, we would sort of, you know, take over the cricket uh, landscape in the US um, from post-career sort of things. But, you know, Obviously, things don't always work out the way it did, um, but a majority or all of us have fallen on our feet again and, and you know, tried to make it happen. Um, but I, I guess it's, it's it's in every country, you know. Politics is always part of, of part and parcel of cricket, um, regardless of of what country you're in. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been eventful. I've learned a lot, and it's taught me a lot about the game. Um, and 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 I'm happy to be in the situation that I'm in. To be brutally honest. Now, a lot of people have these understandings of what the U.S. is like. They they have these fantasies because we watch movies, we see music videos, we listen to music, etc. Uh, what is it really like? I mean, when it comes to the to the star factor and the celebrity factor and going to those different places where, you know, maybe legends have walked before, um, what is it? What is that experience like of a living perspective in the U.S.? No, I mean it's 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 obviously it's it's, it's expensive first and foremost. Um, what you see on TV is not really what you get from the US. Um, those are, are are certain areas of the US that that get showed to the people. Um, it's 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 fast paced in certain parts of the country. Um, sometimes um, you 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 take your time to settle into a place. And yes, don't get me wrong, they got the the amazing places which I've been to: New York, Florida. Um, uh, wherever it is in the country that that people have seen Los Angeles, I've been been to those places. It's it's, it's beautiful, um, but there's there's obviously sides to America that people don't see. I mean, geographically, that country is it it is massive, and a ten minute drive for when I lived in Cape Town to to Newlands, I lived in Kenilworth. It wasn't even a ten minute drive, and I was at at work, you know. But in the US, you got to drive so far. Um, I can tell you now where the Kardashians live. They live two hours away from downtown LA or the road Rodeo Drive, wherever they stay, or go shopping or you know, go for lunch or whatever. So they gotta drive two hours to get there. Uh they live in Calabasas. So it's 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 a lot of driving, it's geographically quite big. Um, but the the opportunity within the country itself um is amazing, you know. And that's what I've 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 done it. I've got a two-year-old boy now and you know the opportunities. He's American, obviously, being born there. But like, just the opportunities, and you 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 see the you know the growth for 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 someone of a family of our statures, it's big. So that's why you you try to you know make it work where you're at. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me get back to the New Zealand tour because that's obviously what this is all about. Okay, uh, 
I want to ask from my observation of the team when I looked at the squad because I mean I've been covering now domestic cricket and South African cricket for quite some time now for me to try and understand the newer players that are in the team. A lot of people are like unfamiliar with some of them. My understanding of the structure of the team is that you know with particularly with the with the bowlers that he selected uh, going with obviously uh, more experience with you guys um Dane Patterson or uh, Duane Olifield Tepumareke my understanding of that my mentality is that when you are an experienced bowler uh, there isn't really once you get into your rhythm and you understand your game you can be a lot more lethal i feel than someone that is still learning their game especially in foreign conditions because it's all about putting the ball in the in the right spot and being able to assess conditions do you think that that thought process went through coach Shukri's mind with regards to um selecting the, a, an experienced bowling attack yeah of course i mean he's he's, he's very methodical in the way he approaches things and he's a He's a deep thinker, and, and and this is what he's after. You know, he's he's trying to take, um, w- see see with, the, with with the public they see a young team and people that are inexperienced, and unfortunately the public doesn't watch four day cricket, um, and that's just the way cricket is. So you will see a guy like Zubair Hamza, and you're like, oh, he's done this at international cricket, but if you look at his stats, he averages close to fifty. David Beddingham averages fifty. Um, but if you actually take a calculator, type in the first class games that everyone's played and you divide by the amount of people that's in the squad, you press equals, you will see that there's an average of 90 first class games among the team. And first class cricket is an important part of where you learn the game, you know, and having those that type of experience within the group, it makes it comfortable, you know, because if you take myself, Pato, uh, Duan, uh, uh, Sean, Kaya, uh, Keegan Peterson. Um, I can actually tell Neil Brandt, the captain, even like if you take the whole group, it is a group that's got a lot of experience. So, conversations, yes, will still be about our learnings within the game. Yes, we know we're coming up against a strong New Zealand team that's got their, as the people say, their best uh, 11 that's going to play. But again, they don't know what we are capable of doing. So again, they're going to have to adapt, like you say, uh, to to what we are delivering, you know. Uh, because if you're going up against a Keshav Maharaj or Aidan Markram or a um, Kyle Verena, not even Kyle Verena, but the more experienced guys, KG Rabada, Temba Bavuma, Tim Saudi is exactly going to know where to bowl to these guys. But now it's a sort of adaptation that they're going to take. So we've got the upper hand in that, that sort of, um, you know, that sort of matchups. So cricket has worked um, and how we've got to, you know, take the game forward. Um, so at the end of the day, there's, there's there's two sides of the scale. People are trying to balance it out. And at the end of the day, we just got to have to wait and see how things happen. But I think it's going to be a good series, to be honest. Having played cricket mm-hmm. with these guys for the last couple of months, um, it's, it's, it's going to be good. I see another comment trend. Uh... A lot of, from the stories, I mean, I've, from the interviews that I've done with these players, um, the likes of Eddie, Reynard, um, the likes of David, um, now you, and and a lot of the other guys, Tepo Mareke, uh, I'm talking about now the newer guys in the team, there seems to be a common trend that their careers haven't necessarily been easy. There's been hurdles, there's been things that they needed to overcome, uh, so... What what I'm seeing in the team is resilience. It's that that fight within their individual characteristic. Um, is that something that you also see within these players? Because I mean, there's stories about Reynard van Tonda as well. When the in the 2018 um, under 19 World Cup, we broke his finger before the the tournament, and the the doctors told him you might not be able to use his finger again if he plays. And he said, no, it's worth it. And he went out and he played and he scored hundreds in the in the tournament. Um, said that the, the sacrifice would be worth it. So a lot of those type of stories you hear about that resilience and 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 David Beddingham's accident coming back from that, um, Eddie Moore not getting picked in SAA sides, etc. Your journey um, of of being selected in teams and then and then being left out and then having to come back again. So do you do you agree with um, with me when I say that this team, the players in this team, um, they have a certain bit of fight and resilience in them that makes them um that make made coach coach Shukri also think about that factor when selecting them 
Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Um, if you look at the whole journey, I mean, Dane Patterson's journey, um, people regarded him as a, a white ball bowler. Um, and he's made a name. He's taken a lot of wickets and a hell of a lot of money by doing what he's done in four-day cricket. So, um, and it's about other... The, the thing is, is about other teams appreciating and valuing his contribution um, at, at, at knots where he's at and he's, he's delivered. You know, and 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 like you say, everyone's got a story. Um, Rainer van Tonde's story, people don't know that about him because he's a four-day cricketer. And four-day cricket in South Africa is not publicized as it should be. Um, but if you look at the two spinners in the squad, is is close to 900 wickets between the two of us. Um, if you look at if you look at the number five batsman in David Penning, who was just played for South Africa, he averages 50. Zubair Ramza averages close to 50. Um, Keegan Peters has played 15 test matches. Um, it's 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 just a lot of experience that's that's you know in the team and resilience that everybody has a story to tell. So if I'm looking to the bra next to me, I'm gonna say like, listen, my bro, I got you. Like you know, don't worry about it. Um, and I know the rest of the squad has that. Yes, a lot of things have been said about us, but it is what it is. We here, we've got to compete. And at the end of the day, it's not a contact sport. I've always said this, cricket is not a contact sport. It's a skills orientated game. So if you can uphold your skill for a long period of time in this format of the game, you can definitely compete. Um, and, th and that's just the way it is, you know. Um, your mental space has to be good in, in, in test cricket because it's long and it's, it's a grind, you know. Yes, people say it's 90 overs, it's a day, but it, it, it's, it's a grind and you know you got to keep coming back for more. Um, and it's a sort of addiction, you know, because I thought my career was done. Uh, Shukri, Shuk's message me, things change, you know. Um, I've come back and I've played five, six first-class games this year already, or last year into this year, and it's and it's been good, you know. I've I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a it's a team that I love being around. The guys are good. The guys are, are a great bunch of guys. So yeah, it's 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 been pleasant, and um, I think there's going to be a couple of things that people are going to sit up and say, wow, okay. Why is so and so not in the next squad to go somewhere? Why is so and so not? Because they did well in New Zealand. So that's mm. the beauty of our sport, you know. Uh, you don't get it anywhere else in the world. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. I feel up like, for grabs. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about the New Zealand conditions. Now we know. I, well, I know that Reynard has some experience in New Zealand, having gone to New Zealand for the Under 19 World Cup. Um, so certain grounds over there he, he knows about because I think the first test that you guys play i think they the team played two games in that venue um so i think you'll have an understanding a little bit about the conditions i don't know if he's um maybe communicated that with you guys and then zubay ramza playing there and duan olifir has already played there uh can you tell me a little bit of insight that they maybe gave you or what the what the conversation was like because i know Kachuk is all about He's very focused on on the importance of conditions as well and reading conditions. So can you tell us as fans, because we also want to learn, that's what this channel is about. We're trying to educate South African cricket fans or maybe unaware of certain things uh, about the the ground and about the, the the ground that you guys are at. I don't know how much of the pitch you guys seen already, but can you give me a, this, uh, an understanding of what type of conditions um, it will dish up in New Zealand? Yeah, we only just arrived in um Tauranga yesterday because we've been for the last I don't know is it a week over a week we've been in in, in Christchurch we've been um playing um a warm-up game and we had a couple of days of training um so we've just we've literally just arrived today um so I'll be honest with you conditions you can't really I can't tell you anything about it uh pitch was covered when we arrived um unfortunately um so from, but again, the history of the ground, there's only been four test matches. So it's not a lot that we can take take away from that. We can only take away that uh, data. Um, but it's it's obviously, we, we all know New Zealand is a green pitch when we arrive on day one. It looks that way, um, but it doesn't play that way in some 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 uh, occasions. So it's again, it's, it's, it's about, you mentioned it earlier, just being, you know, being able to adapt to these conditions and and trying to execute. I wish I could give you this this beautiful uh, breakdown of, of, of conditions, uh, but unfortunately I, I can't. Um, but yeah, it, it's again we just gotta have to adapt on the field. At the end of the day, that's that's what that's what's gonna be the 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 game changer between the two teams. 
And can you give me a little insight into Neil Brandt as a captain? Uh, what makes him special? You've obviously played with a lot of captain captains yourself as well. Can you give me some insight into the, his style of captaincy or his brand of, um, for, excuse the pun, captaincy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's quite he's quite relaxed as, as well played, Khalid. Um, he's quite relaxed again, but he's a leader that that you know comes out and he's he's a doer. Um, so he tries to set the tone, top of the order. Um, he doesn't speak much, in the sense of you know, um, um, you know other captains I've had in the past, like a Justin Kim, for example, who, who, who plans ahead of time and you know this is what we're gonna do, this is what we have to do to to be better. But Neil Neil does mention those type of things. It's straightforward, but. Again, he's a kind of leader that leads from the front and 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 opens the batting, and he shows. Listen, guys, this is this is what I'm here to, we're here to do. Um, and I'm, I mean, Shukri Shukri's seen something in him, and that's why he's in the position that he's in. You know, um, so again, it's a it's a group of guys that appreciate each other, that enjoy each other. Um, so he's basically just on the field leading the guys in the right direction. But everybody knows. And understands what they need to do because I did mention there. If you work out all the first class games, it's close to our 90 games in a, in a squad of 14 that we are, or 15, I should say. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we're at. Yeah. So Ravi, um, Zanzi Comic Club says, then you know you want to say it. Hello, Vietni, what uns Vietni? Hello, Vietni, what uns Vietni? Yeah, that we actually watched it in Christchurch, to be honest. Um, it was like probably four o'clock or five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, yes. Most of the guys were were at, at the Irish pub actually, uh, and we were watching. Hello, Vieti was was Vieti. New Zealand is down, um, and that's the benefit that we're going into. Um, yes. We've literally our unknowns going to play in a test match, which for us works beautifully, you know, uh, because since we've come back into international sports, we've always had this target on our back because people knew the ability of our players. Um, so this is going to be, it's an historic tour, you know, um, a new trophy was just unveiled today. Um, so it's, there, there's a lot of significance, you know, we had a beautiful traditional welcome yesterday uh, from the Maori people. And, you know, the, these are the type of things that make you realize that this is not a, a CSA four day competition or a momentum when I was here, momentum one day cup or it's it's none of those type of things. It's a real deal. Um, and this is what we, what we here for, you know, and we, this is why we play this game. Um, mm -hmm. to be a part of it, you know, and a lot of the guys, young guys that they've always dreamed of of playing for South Africa and here's the opportunity. It's still a test match um, and they want to put their hands up and do well. You know, it's it's opportunity. 100 year, big 100, you're going to be a part of the Pro Tears for a very long time. So there's another question here from Leafly. I have to ask the fans questions that I've asked. Um, you've been away, obviously, and come back. Yeah. So in that period, what do you think uh, of the standard of first class cricket in South Africa? Yeah, I mean, I've come back after four years um, and I've played um, in the Division Two um, game. And then there was this young kid that that stood out to me, Ruan Asbrook, um, I think uh, from Limpopo, played really well. So my 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 what I make of the, the, the standard of, of first class cricket at the moment is that there's tons of batsmen coming through. And that makes me happy because, you know, those set up the, the, the games for four bowlers. Um, but again, looking at, at you know, the stocks of, of the, the bowlers coming through at the moment, there's not what I had when we were, were back then. But the standard of the game is really good. There's good competitive cricket happening at the moment. Um, and that, for me, is, 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 is really good, you know, because you can see those, the, 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 the players that are dominating domestic cricket are stepping up to, to, to play international cricket, you know. Um, there's this kid, Mapaka, he's played for South Africa A already in the under-19 World Cup. There's kids coming through. Um, and 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 I mean it's 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 real good, you know. Um, division two, division one, whatever it is, you playing good cricket. Dion Forrester at the moment has been playing real good cricket for, for the Knights. Um, and then you get experienced guys like Gian Clute at the Knights team driving the driving the team to get back to division one. So I mean the the promotion relegation has really been good. Um, it's the first time I've been a part of something like this. And you can see how important it is to the guys. Uh, because it's it's life or not life or death, but I mean it's it's you know, it's a it's an important part of their makeup. And I love that because it's really competitive. And I've always been the type of guy to play for the team to win. 
And lastly from me, I just want to know what the feel like is in the camp. Is there nerves? Is it positivity? Belief nah. that you guys can do it? What is it like? No, nah, we, de we definitely believe. I'm telling you now, like, to the public out there, I promise you, we're not going to walk onto the field and, and just fold over. We're a team that knows each other for quite some time. We're very much prepared for what's going to happen. Um, and, and we switched on, you know. We know that this is an opportunity for us to create some, you know, some some history. I mean, you look at Bafana Bafana beat Morocco, the West Indies beat uh, Australia. You know, there's opportunity. At the end of the game, it's not a contact sport. I said this. I said this earlier. It's not a boxing match. It's not UFC. It's not rugby. It's a cricket match. If you keep your skill for a certain period, um, we can we can play. You know, and 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 that's that's the the, the beauty of 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 the game of cricket. You know. Sorry, mm -hmm. that was my son. No, it's fine. Okay, this is one more question from a fan, and maybe that you can give us insight in. Um, Leichle says, why do you think that South Africa doesn't produce um, enough risk spinners in South Africa? Yeah, the care for spin in South Africa needs, uh, you know, a bit more sort of taken care of. Um, in, in, in the four-day game, um, you need someone that understands, you know, what's going through. I, I, I remember sitting in, in America, and I thought to myself, this this... Caleb Maleka, Saleka guy from Northwest, looks a really good prospect for for um, for white ball cricket. Um, I don't know what happened in the last last couple of couple of months or, or, or last season or whatever it is, but it's it's just a care factor of understanding that they're going to be be hit for boundaries, um, and 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 just the conversation about it. You know, um, I think a lot of things don't get spin doesn't get spoken about enough in South Africa. Um, my mentor has always been Paul Adams, and I've, I've I've spoke to him about spin bowling for a very long time. Um, and I was in East London for the second game, and he flew flew uh, over Shukri, made him made him fly over, and we had conversations about spin bowling. And I think that that is important. That needs to happen for kids to understand that it's okay to be hit for a boundary, um, and the coaches to understand that this is going to happen. Because at the end of the day, wrist spinners can be match winners, not only in white ball cricket, but in four-day cricket too. Um, it's just the, the patience that we need to have with them that can excel them to the next level. Yeah, And, and who do you think is the most promising up-and-coming bowlers? You can say spin bowlers or, um, or fast post bowlers. Yeah, I mean, this uh, Mapaka kids really set the house on fire and that's natural for us South Africans to, you know, jump on someone that's that's come on and bowled quickly with with swing with swing um but there's this i mean i can i can mention a guy in the second division two matthew pollard um langa um they've done well um and then i look at a guy like yes he's been around for quite some time um tepo murek has been been really good but then you 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 actually take take back um you go sort of like to the young guys um Trying to think, um, Keenan Smith's a young off spinner that I've worked with in uh, in, in in Cape Town, and I was bowling down there recently. Rory Rory asked me to come in and help, and I look at that that potential, and I see a lot, so much potential within him, um, and I was like, this is this is nice, you know, um, and then for me, the the the, the most promising uh, uh, bowler that that could that's got a lot of potential, or two, I should say, is uh, Nipo Mbunguse from uh, the Knights and, and Joe Van Dijk. Um, they, they, they look real promising. Joe Van Dijk's got natural pace and Nipo does too. Um, so if we can work with those, I mean, that's that's going to be exciting for, for South African cricket. Hmm. Dane, thanks a lot for giving me your time all the way you, there. Uh, it was Thank awesome you, to, to have a chat with you again. I'm hoping Thank we you, can sir. catch up again in the future. Yes, Good luck. Good luck for the, for the tour, and I hope you guys yes, um, Thank you. can really make us proud. We will. Trust yeah. me, we're going to do our best. That's, that's yeah. all we're going to do. Trust me. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. So, guys out there, thanks a lot for tuning in, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care, everybody.